problem, we are at a party and four people put their business cards into a hat. And then we're interested in, so everyone goes and draws exactly one business card from the hat, and we're interested in the event that exactly any of them get their own card, okay, for n equals zero up to four, right, which would be the possible values. Okay, so the first step uh, is uh, to write down what the sample space is for this experiment. And the sample space here would be the number of ways in which the cards could be distributed amongst the four people, right? So the number of ways to distribute four objects, or to order four objects right, in, amongst the four people. Thinking of it as the number of ways to order four objects, then the sample, then the size of S would be four factorial. Because there's four possible cards to put in the first place. That would be like whatever card the first person gets. Then there's three possible ones for the second person to get two for the third, and then the last person is determined after the first three have drawn, right? So each of these outcomes is going to be equally likely, or we're going to assume they're all equally likely. There's no reason to assume otherwise in this example. So to count these things, we just need to count the number of favorable outcomes and divide it by four factorial. So the probability of E naught, for example, is going to be the size of E naught over the size of S. Now to calculate the size of E naught, you can write down the whole sample space there's only 24 possible options. It wouldn't take you that long. And that's what I would recommend to do if you had no other ideas. And then just count how many of those lead to no one getting their own hat. Okay. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you can see what the trick is, then, then you can argue as follows. So let's consider uh, some option where person one gets their own hat. Okay. So if person one, person one does not get their own hat, so person one has three options of which hat they could get, which is not their own. Let's say they got person two's hat. Okay. Then person two, once, if person one chooses person two's business card, I think I'm missing, mixing up business cards and hats, then person two still has three options to choose from. Let's say they choose number three. But once person two has chosen a business card, then person three, if we don't want them to get their own, has to choose person fours, and person four has to choose person threes. I mean, person ones. So we can see that once we've sort of determined two people not getting their own, the other two people, there's only one way in which they could not get their own. Okay. So if you think about it, uh, uh, how many ways would there be for person one to not get their own hat? Well, there would be three. And once person one has chosen their own hat, their, whatever, whoever's hat they choose, let's say they chose person two, that person would also have three choices of a hat to choose. So the total number of ways in which no one chooses their own hat is just three times three, which would be nine. And if you simplify <coughs> nine over 24 factorial, today I think I can do my fractions, it's three over eight. So that, that's how you would argue E naught, for instance, just using counting arguments. Okay. All right. Now, what about the event E1, for example? So to count E1, the first thing to note is that there are four people who could get their own hat. Okay? Right? So I could choose any one of these people, and they could get their own hat. Right? So let's say we choose person 1. So person 1 gets their own hat. Right? That means that person two now has how many hats to choose from? Well, they have three. Uh, I'm sorry, they have two hats to choose from if we don't want them to get their own, right? Because we're trying to make it so that exactly one person gets their own hat. So if we don't want person two to get their own hat, they can choose either three or fours. But once they've chosen one of these guys, if neither of these guys are going to get their own, they're determined. Three would have to get four, and then four would have to get two. Actually, that's not true, is it? There's two ways we can do it. They can do two or four also. So we'd actually have another times two. And if, oh yeah, that's right. OK, so, so we were right the first time. All right. So in the end, this one then is 8 over 24, which is 1 third. Okay, right. So there's only one way once we've chosen the first two people to get their own hat. Similarly for E2, now we need to fix exactly two people to get their own hat. Now, there's four people who we could choose for the per first person. Let's say we chose one. And then there's three people we could choose for the second person. Let's say we chose two.
But then once we've specified the two people to get their own hat, the other two people have to get each other's hats, and there's only one way for that to happen. But one thing, one problem here is that we've double counted, right? So instead of four times three, we should really use four choose two. Because otherwise I'm double counting the event where one and two get their own hats, for instance. And so uh, arguing that one out then, it looks like we end up with 12, so six over 24, which is one fourth. And then for the last two, those are actually the easiest ones. Because there's no way for exactly three people to get their own hat. If three people get their own, then the fourth person also has to get their own. And there's only one way for all four to get their own. So that one would be P, E4, which is one over 